I know many riders struggle with what they're gonna use for navigation on their motorcycles. Are you gonna use the phone mounted to the handlebars and risk it falling off? Are you gonna use just the phone in the jacket pocket and just use voice communication through the headset? Or you can go for a dedicated GPS unit, which is fairly pricey, or there's something a little bit in between. We've got Android Auto and CarPlay that'll work on any motorcycle and work with your phone and pretty much does it all from music to GPS to texting to anything that your CarPlay and Android Auto could do. So that's what we're gonna go over through this video. We're gonna test out this unit. We're gonna install it on the bike and we're gonna see how well it is. So stay tuned. So I already unboxed everything just so you can see. You've got the unit itself, which you've got the bowl mount that's already mounted. And then you've got your power cable coming out, which they give you a USB here which is nice. And then they also give you the hardwired kit and you want to hardwire it to the bike. Now what's nice about it, this, if you've already have USB on your bike up front, you just plug this in and then plug this in and you're good to go. I got a weird email the very next day after I ordered this from the company saying something about, please check the item. It might be defective. Although we packed it carefully, blah, 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 which kind of made me wonder what was going on. Did they, how do they know it was going to be defective? Did they ship out their wrong stock? Like, do they have their refurb units or returned units that were defective and someone mixed it up in the shipping, but I don't know. So we're going to test this out and make sure it's good before we do mount it. They also give you mounting so you can mount to the handlebars. I already have a mount on the handlebar. I've got the, the ram mount there, so I'm just going to use my existing one, but I'm going to open this up and see what's involved with it. So here's the mount unwrapped. It's basically just like a, a ram mount. And then this part you can mount to your handlebars. They give it these, you know, these U-bolts. There is no kind of security on this. If this was on your bike and someone wanted to steal this, basically just, you know, unscrew the ram mount and pop it off. So not too thrilled about that, that there's really no kind of security, but this is, it's not plastic, this is metal. They also give you this mount too. So you can mount it too, if, if you got anywhere that you just wanna pop a, a bolt out and then screw this on your bike. You've got this mount as well. Right, so we're gonna try and set this up with my phone here. Let's just, we're gonna go into settings. Uh, Bluetooth, name, it's called Car BT, paired to Jane's phone. Oh, all right, so this is a previously used item. We're gonna remove Jane's phone. I'm going into my Bluetooth here. Let's pair a new device. Maker A1E. No, it's called Car BT. I don't know what that Maker A1A is. Pair. Allow access to my contacts. All right, looks like we're paired. Meanwhile, up here it's showing. Oh, all right. This is my Pixel 6. That is correct. Pair. I guess I had a reboot. I'm just curious what it plays out of because I don't hear any sound, any audio coming out of here. All right, so I did just shut down. Let's see what happens when you apply power to it. Like if you were, if it was on the motorcycle. So there, just plug the USB in. So it powers up. I want to see if it's going to go right into Android Auto with my phone. I didn't touch my phone, I didn't unlock my phone. Oh, but look at that, the date and time changed. Oh, well, went right into Android Auto, which is cool, so I really don't care about the date and time because I have it here. I try doing it to my helmet. I'm putting my, uh, my FOD Sports FX6 into Bluetooth pairing mode right now. All right, some pairing modes. Now I'm gonna hit this. Oh, there's my FOD Sports. Connected. All right, so it's connected to FOD Sports. Now I'm gonna play music. All right, it's coming through my headset. All right, so other than a couple little hiccups during setup, setup was really not that bad. Um, it does help if you read the manual a little bit. One thing I am noticing is that, I, I don't know why you bother setting the clock and date and time on this thing, because as soon as you turn off power and turn it back on, date and time is gone. But really that's no issue because if you use Android Auto or CarPlay, as soon as that connects, your time and date and everything comes from your phone anyway. So unless you were using this as a standalone unit, which I don't know why you would, 
then that would be an issue. But it doesn't say anything about how to keep the date and time on. Like I said, as soon as power is lost, date and time goes along with it. I do like the fact that this paired really well with my Bluetooth headset, which I've got a FOD Sports FX6. And as you saw, all I had to do is pair this, put this in pairing mode, and then put my FOD Sports in pairing mode, and then paired up, and then everything worked. The, the mic on the helmet worked, music was playing through the speakers, you know, in the helmet, um, you know, voice commands were working. And it was really seamless. So you don't have to do like a triple setup, like pair your phone to this and pair your phone to the uh, FOD Sports. Although my phone was previously paired to my FOD Sports, so I don't know how that comes into play. Maybe that's why it was so seamless. But either way, your phone should be paired to your headset anyway, you know, previously or whatever headset you had. But all I had to do was pair my headset to this and then everything just came together and worked. And I don't know why sound wasn't working out of this at first when it was just all disconnected. When I was playing music, just nothing was coming out. After I rebooted and I didn't have my headset or my phone connected, uh, or I should say I had my phone connected, but not my headset. If I hit play, music was actually playing out of the speaker out of this. And same thing with the Google, you know, the voice commands, all the prompts were coming out of this. So if you don't have a headset, you will get um, commands out of here and you will get music playing out of here. And like I said, voice commands. So that's pretty cool. As far as the screen size goes on this, it's really probably smaller than most, most of the cell phones you have out there. So, which begs the question, why don't you just use your cell phone mounted to the handlebars? And I've tried everything. I've done the cell phone thing on the bars. I've done the regular GPS, you know, a car, regular car GPS mounted to the, to the bike, which mm, if you see my other videos, it works. But of course, it's not waterproof, so you got to watch out if it rains. And just the commands, you know, touching the navigation is just, you know, just clunky and not smooth. So you can, yes, you can use, you can get a rock form or a quad lock or whatever and mount your phone to it. Me personally, I just like having my phone on my pocket and my jacket on me. Uh, don't really like having it on the bike. My other problem is like, even on, if you have an Android Auto and you put it in developer mode for the screen to be all on all the time, the screen always changes anyway. You get an alert, you get a phone call, like you could be in maps, um, then it'll switch over to phone if you get a call and then it won't go back to maps. It should, but a lot of times it doesn't. So now you're on your bike and you're fiddling around, you no longer have your maps, and now your, your screen is locked, and now you have to unlock it. You can't use face unlock because you get a helmet on, So and you can't <laughs> do it typing your code while you're riding, you're swiping and typing code, and you got gloves on, it's just, you know, that that's a hazard in itself. So that was one of the big things why I stopped using the phone on the bike, because it just kept switching screens and moving over to the screens that I didn't want to be on, and the other thing is that phones overheat in the summer. My phone is, anytime I had it on the bars, sitting in the sun, it would just overheat, stop responding. I'd have to unplug it, you know, put it in my pocket, wait for it to cool down. And you don't want that. I want my phone for, for phone if I need it for emergencies. I just want to protect it in my pocket and be done with. So we're going to test this out on the bike and see how well it works. I, I don't know. It, it does seem pretty. You can probably see the glare from the lights. It does seem pretty reflective, so I don't know how it's gonna work in bright sunlight. Right now it's kind of overcast, so we'll mount it to the bike, we'll take it a ride and see how well it works. If it's too glary, um, I might return it, I might not. But then again, it's really no different than having a phone on the bike, you're gonna have the same type of glare, but at least you have the convenience of this not being your phone. And you know, I'm gonna tidy up these wires once I figure out how I'm gonna wire it. Uh, I might just use it. No, you know what? I'm not going to leave it USB because if it rains, I don't want to worry about USB. I mean, it does have a glare. Not a bad glare. I mean, it, I'm seeing the uh, showy helmet, my showy logo. It's definitely readable. Definitely, I mean, and I don't even have my glasses on. So I don't think that 800 by 480 resolution is really gonna make a difference. I mean, if I expand the map fully, I mean, look at that, that actually looks really good. Uh, let's check out the voice commands. I'm gonna try it by using the double tap on the FOD Sports. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna get the voice commands. I think I'm gonna have to press the, the mic button on the device itself. Because the FOD Sports, you press the button, you get in the FOD Sports commands. Let's try this guy. Get me directions to gas station. Alright, so that works. Okay, so I can't use... The voice commands work, 
but I can't use the voice commands using the headset uh, functions. Like on this FOD Sports, to use the headset command or to use voice commands, you, you um, double tap on the center button, and then you could say, you know, hey Google, or, you know, whatever. Uh, this, I have to press the speaker, the little microphone button, which isn't bad. That, you know, that's not a deal breaker. Um, either way, I gotta reach out and press a button, right? All right, I'm impressed. For $239, this came out to. It's pretty impressive. It's very smooth, works just like Android Auto does in my car. Uh, connection is seamless. As you saw, just when I turn the bike on, well, when I turn this USB power on, because that's how I have it hooked right now, but as soon as it gets power, you don't have to take out your phone, you don't have to unlock your phone. I didn't even have to do anything with my Bluetooth headset on the bike, I just because that was paired from previously. As long as that's paired through Bluetooth to this, when this thing receives power, it pairs your phone and it pairs your headset. And if you don't have your headset with you, it just plays out the internal speaker. All right, so first impressions of this, pretty cool. I mean, it is nice having Android Auto or CarPlay on your motorcycle. You know, I'm not too thrilled about the fact that I got a previously owned unit. You know, as you saw, it said Jane's phone when I, I checked into the settings, whatever. I'm not even gonna bother about that. As long as it's working, it's in good condition, there's no scratches, whatever. Uh, but it, that is something you probably have to be aware with. I know not just this company, this seems to be like four or five other companies that make the same thing. They look exactly the same, but they go into different brands. Uh, I guess it depends on which vendor you use and you know their reputation or whatever. I've read some reviews, people saying they got refurbed units or defective units, whatever. So at least if it's Amazon, you can return it, no hassle. Uh, some of the things I like about it, installation, I love that you've got the option of hardwiring it or you've got the option of just USB because many bikes have USB right up there and if you don't feel like dealing with the wiring, just plug it in and you're good to go. I do like that, but I'm hardwiring it to my bike just so I know it's waterproof and I've got all the connections you know, sealed and, and done and I don't have those exposed USB ports. Other things I don't like, or I shouldn't say don't like, but aren't thrilled about is the glare on the screen. It does have glare, not terrible, but it is kind of an overcast day. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna be like in bright sunlight, but once again, it can't be any worse than what your phone looks like on your bars either. Uh, that's where I know the Garmin definitely shines because the Garmin not only is a bigger screen, higher resolution, it also is a brighter screen. And I don't know what kind of coating they have on there or anti-reflective, but you're also paying $500 for a unit compared to $239. And then at least with this, you've got all the bells and whistles of having CarPlay or Android Auto. Where the Garmin, I've heard, even my friend who has it, it's a pain getting it to sync between your headset and your phone and the Garmin. And you know he usually has some, some issues getting everything to, to work correctly. This was really easy to set up once I paired my Bluetooth headset to this and my phone to this. As you saw, just turn it on and it just automatically connects. I don't have to press any buttons. I don't have to repair anything. Android Auto comes up. So that is really cool. I love that fact. And I love the fact that now I've got Android Auto right there at my fingertips. Uh, the other con is the mic on your headset. And I guess it might depend on which one you have. Like I said, I've got the FOD Sports FX6 and mine usually you double tap on it to do voice commands. And that usually goes right to the phone. This I was getting, I couldn't understand what it said, but when I press it, I get like some new weird prompt says something about voice. But either way, when I try to talk, it doesn't work. So I do have to use the button on this guy itself, the little microphone button. Once again, not a big deal. Either way, I've got to reach out and either push a button here or push a button here. So you're taking your hands off the, off the bars uh, for one reason or another. Gloves, worked fine with gloves. And I don't, my gloves are touch capacitive. So I don't know if it works without touch capacitive gloves because I don't think it's pressure sensing. I think it's actually uh, just like a phone. So you need touch capacitive gloves. I'm not sure I'll post here uh, if that is true or not. Actually pretty cool. I like it. 239 bucks. Now I just hope that the quality is good and doesn't break within a year or gets wet, doesn't die on me. But uh, if they had like a more robust version of this, let's say for 350, even $400, um, you know, better quality, maybe higher resolution screen, I would definitely do it over, over a, let's say a Garmin. Um, I would spend 400 bucks on a really nice Android Auto, but I don't really think you need it. 800 by 480. Seems to be pretty well. I mean, you, you judge, you, you see for yourself in the, in the footage. 
I mean, it, it's fine. Like I said, it's no worse than uh, what it looks like Android Auto on, on your car. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. You know, if you have one of these, what kind of luck you had with it, what kind of bad luck you had with it, hopefully not. Um, what's your experience with it? If you have any other ones that you've seen like this on any of the manufacturers, like I said, I've only seen one of these. They all seem to look, they look the same and have the same exact features just uh, under a different brand name. So I don't know if there are any other uh, models or any other higher end companies that make one of these, but uh, yeah, make it, put your comments down below, uh, comments, suggestions, whatever, questions. So thanks for tuning in guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you enjoyed the content, please hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.